just grab an instructional video. Hold it tight. Hey, Chad, look, it's you. Way. Wow. Yeah, some people can get really, really angry. Really fast. <laughs> Twelve seconds later. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, my God. Help, Chad, help me. Well, hmm. I'll say this much. This film is beautiful. This film is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. This film is truly something majestic to behold. I remember I watched this in theaters. Uh, it was... We... Um, <laughs> my uh, church group uh, that I was in at the time... Um, we were invited by one of the by one of the movie theaters to come and watch The Prince of Egypt early which we were able to watch it I think it was two weeks before it actually came out which was amazing when I think about it in retrospect but you know nowadays I I, I look back on this film and I keep finding just more and more uh, things I like about it. And, ah, oh crap. I did the wrong thing. That's, no. Okay. Sorry about that. So, I, son of a bitch. Still getting used to this TV, 100%. There we go. Okay. So, yeah. I, <laughs> I want to say that this film it's it's portrayal of Moses it's portrayal of Ramses it's portrayal of the atrocities of the rulers of Egypt it it's portrayal and, and here's the thing whether you believe in the divine or not whether you believe in you know miracles or happenstance or you know Again, this is just a film. And I know that there's people who use this film for religious rhetoric and all that, which, you know, that's their business if they want to do that. But at the same time, I mean, philosophically, this film is also very beautiful uh, because it doesn't really take a side. It just is. It portrays Ramses as a human who is in a true position of power. He's the freaking Pharaoh. And his adoptive younger brother, Moses, is supposed to... Like, it, the internal struggle that Ramses goes through. I remember Doug actually, I think, did a... Uh, did a uh, old versus new on this. He did this versus the Ten Commandments, which I think... The Prince of Egypt won because of what it was able to portray, which, given what the Ten Commandments was able to portray, was amazing as well, especially for the time. <laughs> but, I gotta say, you, gotta get, you can get away with a lot more, well, especially by comparison, you can get away with a lot more in, uh, in animated form than you can with, uh, you can with, like, practical, especially for practical effects back in the 50s, which I think it was 1956, which, Jesus, that's, it's still amazing the stuff they were able to pull off in that film. Um, but The Prince of Egypt, I remember Doug talking about that a long time ago, and, yeah, I just figured, what the hell, I'd give this a watch and see what, uh, <laughs> see what Doug has to say about it. So I guess without further ado, this is uh, the Nostalgia Critic, The Prince of Egypt Review, and we're going to watch it and see what Doug thinks. Here we go. This episode brought to you by Full Sail University. Emerge yourself in the world of filmmaking from every angle. Also brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Okay.
again. Just Jesus. Hello, I'm the nostalgia critic guy. Remember it so you don't have to. There's been a lot of movies that changed the way we look at epics. Lawrence of Arabia, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, and arguably one of the biggest trailblazers, The Ten Commandments, both the original and the remake. And we're going to talk in great detail about how both these movies left a huge impact on the world of cinema. Anyone else here in that? Excuse me for a second. Oh, God. <laughs> I was going to say... The only thing that would make this part better is if Val Kilmer were to do the voiceover for this, but I don't think Val Kilmer can really do any voiceovers of anything anymore. I mean, throat cancer. You know how it is. Critic, take your shoes from your feet. Fuck you, Quinn. Seriously, you're tracking mud over holy ground. Dude, this is the internet. Feet are like unobtainium here. Okay, fine. Just answer me this. Why have you abandoned me? Abandon you? You're the Prince of Egypt. You're like the anime film I watched the most when I was a teen. Yet you're talking about Ten Commandments. Well, I like you more, but Ten Commandments left a bigger impact on cinema. And I didn't? No. No. You were a hand-drawn film at a time when CG was beyonce from Destiny's Child. So that means I matter less. No. I mean, yes. I mean... I don't know. How many people praise Ten of this Commandments? Video, yeah. A lot. And how many people praise Prince of Egypt? A few. You never talk about me anymore. I used to be the most beautiful animated film you ever saw. Now it's all Into the Spider-Verse, and Lego Movie, and Kung Fu Panther. Panda. I know what I said! You clearly don't. I Into the Spider-Verse is, is also freaking gorgeous. But I would also say Lego verse, How to Train Your Dragon as well. I would say the the entire trilogy, it's it's up there as well. But yeah, I just want you to look at me with the awe you had when you first saw me. Look at anime Blu-ray who obtained speech. You may be right. Maybe not enough people talk about how impressive you were even two decades later. Well, too little, too late. Look. Polish your disc, upgrade your cover art, because I'm going to treat you like royalty. You really mean it? Absolutely. I have taken you for granted. It's about time everybody sees you for the true prince that you are. Oh my god. I can't wait to tell all my book club. Hey, guess what underrated animated film might get a resurgence? Uh... Oh god. Well, it is underrated. It is. It is. I mean, it's a great, great film. Released in 1998, Prince of Egypt was one of the last major hand-drawn animated films that turned in a decent profit at the time. Uh, that wasn't Disney. Serving as one of the first major releases from then-new studio, DreamWorks, this was their attempt to show they could play with the big boys and turn in something as massive as Disney. <laughs> and put it bluntly, did, this was my Lion King. Don't get me wrong, I really like that film and I know how important it was, but... When you ask me what nostalgic animated movie I associate with having big drama, big characters, big landscapes, big songs, everything yes. you associate with being epic that you watched a ton of times in theaters and even more times at home, that was Prince of Egypt for me. I loved the beautiful artistry, layered acting, visual storytelling, and complex emotions. Though it did fine when it came out, I think a lot of people still associate it with, well, kid stuff. And truth be told, yeah. you can see why. It is still a musical like many kids' films, hand-drawn like many kids' films, has comic relief <laughs> like many kids' films, and yes, was marketed as a kids' film. Next week only, you can get a free beanbag camel toy. My favorite part was the baby in the water. Mommy's cute. The baby in the water that she knows no context of because she's a freaking kid. <laughs> I mean, do 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 do. And while the film does certainly aim for the children demographic as well, and just to show we feel no spite. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. The clever yeah, yeah, yeah. ways it utilizes its medium to tell its story is still awe-inspiring. Yes. Just because it's a musical doesn't mean it's not a great musical. Just because it's hand-drawn doesn't mean it's not spectacularly hand-drawn. 
And even with state-of-the-art technology at the time, the movie still utilizes a lot of classic film storytelling techniques. You can practically do a drinking game to how many shots were clearly inspired by Citizen Kane, Lawrence of Arabia, and yes, the Ten Commandments. It's a film I hold yeah. very close to my heart, even if sometimes I forget the impact it's had on me. Well, today, we're gonna give credit where it's due. This is the underappreciated, but still massively impressive, Prince of Egypt. I'll admit, there is something funny about the film's intro saying how authentic it is right before everyone breaks into a musical number. Again, you can see how some people would have a problem getting a grasp on this film. Yeah. And everything nice. Jesus. The songs are by Stephen Schwartz and orchestrated by Hans Zimmer. I guess a lot of folks wanted to see Elton John and Tim Rice back like they did with Lion King, but Schwartz's songs are pretty damn epic. Yeah, and Hans Zimmer's compositions are beautiful. Honestly, I'm just not sure how the John and Rice combo would work here. It's tough to be a god, but if you get the people's god. Wow. 98? Is that back when PG still meant something? Oh yeah, they mean business. Yeah, this isn't like Onwards PG with- no. Oh no, thematic elements! This is the Adams Family Girl Scout cookie joke replaced with baby food. You actually need parental guidance in this film that recommends parental guidance. Hush now, my baby. Fearing her baby will be next, a mother puts her son in a basket, hoping he'll survive the dangerous waters. You can actually do a bookend count, there's so many clever callbacks in this film, but we'll get to those when we get to those. Yeah, okay. Well, God's not answering that prayer. Yeah, God's not really known for giving his chosen ones the fluffiest of lives. This is true. I mean, he's washed away to the queen who comes across the baby in her pond. Penitence. Oh. oh. Sarah, tell the soldiers they missed one. <laughs> the baby is named Sarah. Moses, and he grows up into a young prince played by Val Kilmer, with his brother Ramesses played by Ray Fiennes. This is a star-studded cast with none of them Egyptian shame. I wanted to enjoy this too. Oh god, dude, again, here's the thing. I know Ray Fiennes is is a white British man, but his portrayal of Ramses, if they could give Oscars for animated film performances, good fucking god. It's just gods of Egypt except less animated. That minute you've always looked up to me. Yes, but it's not much of a view. So, while humor is certainly a needed levity in a film like this, and it helps hook younger viewers in as well, how did Ray Romano put it? It's not really about the kids. Yes, the humor is, is more a means to show how everyone works off each other. Moses and Ramesses playfully get in trouble, caring nothing for the slaves or their hard work they destroy. The priests, played by Steve Martin and Martin Short, keep their positions of power through illusions, claiming they're the works of the gods. Even the spin of Moses' wig is to make it clear he isn't scalping himself later on when he takes it off. So unlike other comic relief where they exist only to provide laughter, these comedic elements do all play a part in telling the story. I, I would make the argument that Darcy actually is integral to certain parts of WandaVision. I mean, I, so for those of you tuning in, or those of you who are not aware, me and Nick are watching WandaVision on our channel, but the thing is, with us watching WandaVision, uh, it has basically, uh, you, you know, we finished it. So, by the so don't worry, no spoilers, no worry about spoilers or anything like that. But yeah, yeah, anyway, sorry. With that said, it would be nice if they were funnier. Don't think they'll get in trouble for this, do you? No, not a chance. You're in trouble, well, young man. Get down here. My new thing. <laughs> My new thing. That line is so lazy, it might actually work its way around to being funny again. Nobody will even notice this coming in. Nobody will even notice. Everybody hates Ramesses. Jeez. But the dramatic moments are not only effective, they're concise. Yes. You get right away that Pharaoh, played by Patrick Stewart, places a lot of pressure on Ramesses, saying he could be the weak link to bring down their empire, which he ultimately will be. But he also does care for his children. He's not a 100% movie monster. I know he will live up to your expectations. Maybe. Maybe so. All of this is set up in just three minutes, and the rest is established yeah. through subtle touches. Like Ramesses' place of relaxing is always in his father's lap. 
and even the sculptures of Pharaoh are constantly looking down on him. You yes. get across a lot with more than just dialogue. It's body language, scenery, and returning imagery. Also, I do want this on a t-shirt. Be still, Pharaoh speaks. Tell me that one sell. Yes. To celebrate Ramesses being crown prince regent, the priests offer up a woman they captured from Midia, named Sephora, played by Michelle Pfeiffer. You will show the proper respect for a prince of Egypt. But I am showing you all the respect you deserve. Not! In biblical times, that was their version of not! Fun trivia, if you notice this one servant popping up every once in a while, it's because he was originally given a much bigger role. Moses would confess his thoughts to him the same way the owners in Down Abbey would talk to their staff. But the connection between the brothers seemed more important, so a lot of his lines were given to Ramesses, reducing this character and all his lines of dialogue to simply You there, have had sent your Prince Moses <laughs> Chambers. So as a running joke, the directors always refer to this once essential character as simply You there. You there. You there. Still got more attention than Cyborg in the Wheaton Cut. Sephora tries escaping, but Moses notices her. Prince, Prince Moses. Moses. There's a, a man tied up in my room. Oh, also that woman is getting away. Sorry, I should have led with that. She escapes, but Moses Damn. comes across his real brother and sister, Miriam and Aaron, played by Sandra Bullock and Jeff Goldblum. At last. <laughs> At last. Didn't I tell you? I knew he would return to us when he was ready. Miriam, do you want us flogged? I know I kind of crapped on the comedy earlier, but honestly, their improvising surprisingly adds a lot to this scene. It emphasizes the tragedy of pretending to be inferior to someone when you know you share the same blood. She's exhausted from the day's work. Uh, not that it was too much. We, we quite enjoyed it, but, but uh, she's confused. She thinks this is a Disney production. I keep trying to tell her it's Don Bluth. You will regret this night. Hush now, my baby. This is actually one of the directors, Brenda Chapman, singing here, who also does the Angel of Death voice. Oh. Another director, Simon Wells, would do the voice of the old man getting whipped later as well. Ah! 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 These actually weren't men as clever cameos, they just weirdly matched. They even said Simon was the only voice who sounded like an old guy, even when they had old guy scream for the part. <laughs> oh, and like I said, callback. My last lullaby. I've heard a lot of people say how can Moses remember that song if he was a baby, but it's a musical. Also, there are there are children who can remember a lot from their childhood. I know that that I know that the common fr the common thing is that oh you can't remember anything before like the age of three or the age of four, and in some and in most cases yes, but there are very there's actually cases of children who remember their birth. That's mind blowing to me. Like verbatim, they remember their birth. They remember. Uh, they even remember things that their parents have said to them, even though they didn't understand it at the time. They were able to interpret it later. And songs are th and melodies are things that children. It actually helps their their brains grow. They're, it actually like expands like how their minds work. Uh, it's just like you keep hearing. It's just like you know, if you let your child listen to Mozart while they're while they're young. Uh, while they're a baby, they'll grow up to be smart, even though, you know, that's not 100% like accurate. But I always love the jokes like, if you let your chil children listen to Mozart, they'll grow up to be smart. If you let your children grow up listening to DMX, they'll go, <sighs> which, rest in peace, DMX. The song should be utilized whenever they can, and with him whistling the tune earlier. I think it's a clever way to show we figured it out. Speaking of which, it's time for the no uh song. This is my home, and if anybody doubts it, they Aww. couldn't be more wrong. Denial. It isn't just a river in Egypt. Whoa, someone cut the budget in half. The sequence is a clever way to establish that Moses is dreaming, as a lot of directors of anime films have said that's very difficult to get across sometimes. Personally, this is just what I dream when I combine Chipotle with Link Between Worlds at night. He envisions himself being tossed with the other babies, another really great metaphor, when he searches the temples and discovers the awful truth. It was true. I really should have painted over that. They might have risen against us. Sacrifices must be made. Again, the film is really good at making Pharaoh seem human, but not too sympathetic. Oh, my son. 
They were only slaves. It's not like I took away your TikTok account. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, so, again, I think it, it's one part Patrick Stewart, but it's also one big thing with, like, with portrayal of, of characters. You see, and this is the thing, this is what I think a lot of people don't get, is people nowadays, if it's not the extremes, you know, if it's just like, oh, this person's, you know, this person, you know, is on this side of the spectrum, and they represent everything that's on this side. Oh, this character's everything over here, and they represent this side of the spectrum. It's absolutely impossible for most people, for most, like, consumers nowadays to comprehend, oh yeah, there's a middle ground. And it's actually pretty vast, but no one wants to admit it. No one wants to admit that the middle of the road exists, which, hello, I'm here. And in all honesty, if you call me a, a, a middle of the road party here, motor, M-O-T-R, and uh, if you call me a fence sitter, sit on it and rotate. Is that still a thing, TikTok? I'm not on top of what the kids are into, but maybe it it's is. because I slaughter them. Oh. After having a nice talk with his mother, played by Helen Mirren, he looks at the treatment of his people differently. Fate has turned our little misadventure into a great opportunity. I'll admit I love that they use the nose knocked over earlier as a viewing point, and it'll be a great addition to Egyptian Double Dare. Oh. Ah, leave that man alone! What's happening under my nose? Yes. He accidentally kills one of the soldiers and runs away, leading to one of the most telling lines from Ramesses. You saw what happened. I just killed a man. We can take care of that. He was so unfazed by that, it makes you wonder how many people died and they just swept it under the sand. Was there like a house made under that nose? It wouldn't surprise me. We need more lemon Moses? Pledge. The animation when Moses realizes not only what he's leaving behind, but who he's leaving behind is perfectly heartbreaking. The expressions in this film really are some of the best in hand-drawn animation. Yes! The same can be said for the transitions. If you watch Moses' descent into the desert, you'll notice he dissolves from left to right, getting smaller and smaller. This isn't just done to show off, though. Him getting smaller and the background getting bigger shows how more and more lost he's becoming, and how the brutality of the desert is slowly claiming his life, which a sandstorm almost does. Damon, you better come look! I think it's still alive! Hakuna Matata! Again, really glad Schwartz did the songs on this one. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're trying to be more serious with this instead of being, like, playful and kid-friendly, even though the marketing tried to make it a kid's film in certain things. How do you do, fellow kids? kids? As a college student, just like yourselves, I think about school, specifically getting in the film industry. Working in the film industry is an exciting and rewarding experience. If you know you want to be a part of it but don't know where to begin, just check out Full Sail University. Jacob went to Full Sail University and graduated during the uh, during 20, in 2020 during the pandemic, which, you know, he's he's actually working in the film industry now, which is actually one big reason why he's not able to come up and film with us as much. Eh, it is what it is. Where you can learn all aspects of filmmaking and cinematography, either on campus or online. It's like playing that Tendo system we kids are all fond of, but let's get serious. Full Sail's film bachelor's degree program immerses you in the world of filmmaking from every angle. You'll gain hands-on experience while learning what it's like to work on a large-scale production from start to finish, giving you a feel for the role each crew member plays and allowing you to specialize in the ones where your strengths and interests lie. Phones, that's a thing we kids like, right? But let's get serious. The Digital Cinematography Online Bachelor's Degree Program merges the artistic concepts of traditional filmmaking with the technical tools used in everything from documentary filmmaking to commercial production and web video, preparing you to be a jack of all trades in small crew productions. But don't take my word for it. What am I talking about? Yeah, take my word for it. These degrees are offered in an accelerated format to get you into the field faster. With hands-on projects, industry-experienced faculty, and professional equipment and sets, you'll be prepared to pursue your passion. Full Sail grads have gone on to work on some pretty incredible films and TV shows like Godzilla vs. Kong, The Falcon and Winter Soldier, and The Mandalorian, just to name a few. And they're regularly a part of Emmy and Oscar-nominated projects. Unfortunately, they don't have a class on hoverboarding <laughs> yet, but let's get serious. If you but want to find will. out more about these they programs and how to get started, visit fullsail.edu slash nostalgiacritic. That's fullsail.edu slash nostalgiacritic. I'll see you there, fellow kids. 
DoorDash. Hey there, fellow kid. How do you do, fellow kid? It's DoorDash with your container of food. Oh, I was wondering how they were going to tie these two together. Yes, sir. DoorDash connects you with restaurants you love right now, right at your door. Tell me more, fellow kid. You know what I personally love about DoorDash? The convenience. Fellow kid. If there's a certain restaurant you want to go to, but for some <laughs> reason kid. you can't, DoorDash is there to bring the food to you. It's amazing how so right there you are. And now you can get the grocery essentials you need with DoorDash, too. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Wow, that sounded like something important. Ordering is easy. Just open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with a contactless delivery drop-off setting. I really like pointing at you. Mmm, DoorDash. With over 300,000 partners in the US, Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye, Chipotle, and the Cheesecake Factory. Don't you know I have a special offer for you? Let's do that, fellow kid. For a limited amount of time, our viewers can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app and enter the code Nostalgia2021, that's 25% off and up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order. When you Download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NOSTALGIA2021. Well, thank you for my jar of food, fellow kid. Indeed. Would you like to go hoverboarding? No. <laughs> Don't forget, that's Heart code rate. NOSTALGIA2021 Just... for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. discovers a camel which leads into a village where Sephora lives with her family and sadly recognizes him. That's why Papa says she'll never get married. There is a funny line here and there. Oh yeah. Ladies, you've cleaned every inch of me. Whoa. Oh. I, I was wrong. <laughs> Maybe two. He's accepted into the village of Medium but claims he's done nothing worth honoring. The High Priest, played by Danny Glover, sings a nice song about how small Nebuchadnezzar. acts of kindness can mean a world of difference. And to one lost sheep, a shepherd boy is greater than the richest king. Notice how the rug perfectly blends into the mountain. Again, not without purpose. The song explains how a thread in a tapestry is like a stone on a mountain, all of equal value. So the rug becoming the mountain shows the similarities. Yes, these are little touches, but as the song says, they add up to form something really special. Again, there's more storytelling going on than what's simply in the dialogue. Hey. And yeah, okay, these two did get married a little fast in the story, but thankfully they do have chemistry in the rest of the film, so I think it makes up for it. I was going to say, enough time passes by to the point where, you know, I think eventually they could fall in love because, you know, him growing a beard and him... I, I mean, I, I forget how long... I forget how long Moses was with Nebuchadnezzar in the uh dang it all right i need to google sorry take just a second eventually oh jethro sorry not jet not nebuchadnezzar damn it why why is my brain like oh, i'm sorry y'all it is currently 504 in the fucking morning i'm sorry i am very tired it's been a very long weekend Ugh. not nebuchadnezzar damn it all right make See if I can remember to edit that out. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. Uh, but how long was he with Jethro and the tribe? It, uh, in Exodus, uh, so Jethro's daughter, Zipporah, Moses' wife, Moses fled Egypt. When did Moses flee Egypt? Uh, Oh, okay. So he was a shepherd for 40 years. I think that's enough time for people to fall in love. <laughs> hell, probably fall in love and live a hell, like a hell of a long life together. I love you. We shall be married in the morning. Cut to years later where a literal lamb of God leads shepherd Moses to the burning bush. Kilmer also does the voice of the Almighty, but whispered under him is actually all the people he's met in his life. Ramesses, Sapora, his mother, and so forth. Again, it's a nice little detail. Who are you? I am that I am. Oh, I'm also Popeye. I have come down to deliver them out of slavery and bring them to a good land flowing with milk and honey. And it's part of our nutritious breakfast. It's also pretty cool that all the elements work their way in. Fire, obviously, but also wind, earth, and the reflection of water. Thank literal God this isn't a Turner production or else he might have looked like this. 
That piece Captain of paper can be recycled and used again to make napkins, newspapers, and lots of other products even more exciting than napkins and newspapers. I shall teach you what to say. Well, just that one thing, but you'll say it a lot. Yes. How can I even speak to these people? Who made man's mouth? Does God have to cut a bitch? You shall do my wonders. There also might be some symbolism around the color choices, as blue seems to indicate the pharaoh and danger, where orange seems to be more connected to the Hebrews and freedom. In fact, you see the color change when he brings them up. I have seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. Could be overthinking it, but it's an interesting tidbit. Once his mission is made clear, the bush blooms, and Moses tells Zipporah he must return to free his people. Zipporah, please, look at your family. Don't you want to get away from him for a while? He returns to find Ramesses has been made pharaoh, and he's ecstatic that his brother has finally returned home. I pardon forever all crimes of which he stands accused. He is the Prince of Egypt. Uh, Sounds great. Where's my throne? Oh, I mean, uh, I should really do the the freeing thing. Can you point to where the throne would have been? Oh, Though it breaks his heart, Moses admits to Ramesses that he's there to free his people, and uses God's power to turn his staff into a snake. Oh, uh, impressive. Uh, hmm. The priest, however, <laughs> show yeah, up their illusions, giving mean? the impression that their gods are stronger. Anubis, sec. So admittedly, the allegory this is not the Disney. strongest song in the film, but there's a few things to keep in mind. First off, this was meant to play up the magician aspect, so it was going to be more like a Vegas number with showgirls and animals, stuff like that. When they decided to take a darker tone, though, they changed the orchestrations but kept the lyrics the same. Honestly, they should have changed them to be a little darker. Yeah. With that said, this is the comic relief song. Think about that. Compare it to other comic relief songs you've seen in the past. Bees the buzz, kids will blow Dan the lion fuzz. On the power You're playing with the big boys now. She wants you so any moment she'll walk through that door. Playing with the big boys, playing with the big boys, the Hakuna Matata. Oh, oh God. What a wonderful By the might of Horus, you will kneel before us. Suddenly, it's looking a little bit more badass, isn't it? Also, I just love yeah. this random lady's reaction to it. Like, oh my god, snakes! Snakes! Oh, that's like the thing I like now! Snakes! Oh god, snakes! Ramesses calls Moses into his throne room, still thinking this is all a joke. Not only do we see that the dead pharaoh clearly still has hold over him, as shown through this profile shot and the fact that his city has literally eclipsed his father's, but he also tries yeah. to make excuses for him. His hands bore the blood of thousands of children. Slaves. Slaves. Again, really great expression on him there. Yeah. Ramesses is honestly one of the most underrated animated villains. When you compare him to other great animated baddies like Frollo or Gaston, Ramesses is still one of the most tragic, complex, and sympathetic. He yes. loves his brother, but we've seen clearly the responsibility that's been hammered into him by his father. In some of the best animation in the movie, and that's really saying something, he comes to grips with the situation by going through every expression you could imagine. Ray Fiennes didn't even think they'd be able to pull this off in animation. But you know instantly in every second what different emotion he's going through. Yep. I sadly can't show it all here because, you know, YouTube! Bingo. But I suggest you find the scene and watch it on your own. It's really an incredible moment. Ramesses, please, you must listen. I will not be the weak link. Goodbye. Ha! 90s references! I love them! Oh, by the way, their workload has been doubled. <laughs> the slaves hate Moses for making things worse, especially his brother, who's now bringing his full Goldblum. When did you start caring about slaves? Was it when you found out that you were one of us? And before you even knew what you had, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now Oy. selling it. You want to sell it. Well, we didn't see because you didn't wish to see. Ah. ah. That is the satisfied look of the ultimate Goldblum, uh. Yes. You did it. No ah. uh will ever be more Goldblum. <laughs> ah. Now all we need is the ultimate. <laughs> yeah, that one's definitely still in the lead. God. Aaron, you shame yourself. Uh-oh. Should I change my pants? 
Miriam gives Moses the motivation to confront Ramesses again, turning the river into blood. The priest, through another illusion, seemed to do the same thing. Hmm. Kool-Aid. Strawberry. Mmm, I love my yummy wummy raw blood! Strawberry, Moses! Dork! The Hebrews grow more nervous, but Moses gives a motivational speech. He can take away your food, your home, your freedom, your sons and daughters. Pharaoh can take away your very lives. A very bad motivational speech. Horrible. This starts the plague song as God goes Old Testament on their asses, throwing everything at them. Fire, locusts, and frogs that were clearly designed in a hurry. Come here. This is visually my favorite song in the film, as there's so much conflict going. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Let my people go. Change my mind. That is good. <laughs> on. It's shown beautifully with the music. And again, the transitions are awesome. I love these cracks that are about to outline Moses' face. It quickly becomes silhouetted, only to discover its two faces, once again colored blue and orange. Yes. It's pretty sweet, though I will admit it does have kind of a sports graphic feel to it. Welcome to the annual East West Bowl, as we get ready to watch some of the best college players in the nation. Oh my gosh. Moses returns to his old home, again shot for shot contrasting the last time he was there, and once again finds Ramesses in his father's lap. Talk to me. We could always talk here. I think it's important to note that when Ramesses does start to open up, he's probably a little drunk, which leads to his vulnerability immediately being challenged when he discovers his son there. It's so dark. Look at how terrified he is of him. There's so much you can read into that reaction, especially given his past with his own father. Think of your son. I do. Fearing he'll look weak in front of his son, and again wanting to follow his dad's footsteps, he makes the threat to finish off what his father started years ago. Be a cry in all of Egypt. Let me move out of the way of this foreshadowing here. Oh, wait a minute! I'm the Gator Kibble, aren't I? That night, the final plague is unleashed as the Angel of Death smites all the firstborn sons, except oh, for those Israel. who put the blood of a lamb on their door. The scene is fittingly creepy, but I will admit there's something about the angel of death checking the door that does make me laugh a little bit. Almost like they're scoping for a no soliciting sign. Something about it makes it less mystical and more utilitarian. Honey, did you take out the garbage? Yeah. Did you feed the cats? Yeah. Did you put the lamb's blood on the door? Oh. Um... You forgot to put the lamb's blood on the door? Don't yell at me! Well, put it up there right now before... Well, great, Timmy's dead. I thought it was done Friday. It's not a weekly thing! Rambus's son is taken as well, and he finally gives in. Uh, you have my permission to go. Can you give us direction so we don't get lost for 40 years? Leave me! All right, all right, who died? Oh, right, I'll show myself out. We get the film's big showstopper song, When You Believe, which is beautifully sung and orchestrated and joyful and uplifting. The only thing I don't like, how it starts. Moses is crushed, God basically murdered his nephew with his help. His family tries to console him, and the first thing his sister says is this. Many nights we've prayed. That is not what anyone would want to hear. No. If she wants to sing, great, but sing to yourself or other people like Sephora does. This is the equivalent of, come on Moses, gray skies are gonna clear up. Seriously, if I was Moses in this scene, I'd be like, Many What the fuck is wrong with you? Got heavy shit on my mind, man. Give me ten. Many no, 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 we can sing Kumbaya later. You give me ten. Many shh, 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 shh. Ten, bitch. Also, there is something a little funny that this is a duet with Sephora. As Miriam sings how she's been in captivity all her life, and Sephora has been in captivity for a day, half a night. Of course, this all builds up to the climax where Ramesses changes his mind and chases after them. But a fiery blaze stops them in their tracks. Okay, I'll level with you. There is no god. I made it up. I have no idea how all this strange shit is happening. Please don't hurt me. No, of course, he parts the Red Sea yeah. in one of the film's most stunning visuals, and they yes. take advantage of how epic they can make it look. Every shot, you feel the size, cold, and texture of the scene. Again, it's spectacularly done. But God wants to make his third act more interesting, so he stops the fire before they all cross. Jump it, jump it, jump it. 
Go faster. Let's go faster. They make it go, just go, in go, time go, as go, the go, sea go, drops, go, go, go. washing Ramesses back to shore. I really dig how there's a solid half a minute of silence just taking in what happened. Again, it makes the unbelievable seem more believable. Yeah. Before Moses stares across the sea, once again bookending the last time he said goodbye to his brother. Cut to Moses with Bye. the Ten Commandments. I'll just assume the rest of the happy ending is in the Snyder Cut. And we wrap up, in my opinion... One of the best hand-drawn movies ever made. Even over 20 years later, this movie is a marvel. At the time, it was the most expensive animated film ever made, and the money is truly on the screen. Mm -hmm. I can see why some people don't get into its attempts to hit a younger demographic, but the artistry and storytelling clearly meant for adults is well worth several viewings. Every time I see it, I notice something I missed before. The detail is so rich and the passion so vibrant. I know it didn't change cinema or anything like that, but it told a great story with great characters using great <laughs> songs and great visuals. It truly does deserve more attention more praise, and more people talking about it. So if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. And if you have before, take another look. Because there's always something new to discover each time. Aw, oh, gee, Critic. Do you really mean it? With all my- Critic! Aw, oh, shit. I thought I was the greatest Moses movie ever made. Oh, no, no, baby, it ain't like that. Oh, it is like that, bitch. There's a new hotness in town. Hey, don't you talk to her that way! Don't you! Don't you talk to her that way! That way! Look, I was just trying to- You better pack up, because your boring three and a half hour ass is out of here! Well, I'd oh, much God. rather be too long than not long enough. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I think you know exactly what it means. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. How do you sleep at night? In a bed with my man. Okay, that was one time! Oh. Ah! Ah! God. So yeah, that was the Prince of Egypt, and... Yeah, I gotta be honest, it is still a spellbinding film, even all these years later. I mean, I don't know what else to say, guys. I've... I love this film. I love it. And Doug's right. Doug's right in a pretty much every aspect of this its songs are great its visuals are great its storytelling is amazing i mean people can say whatever the hell they want you know it's like oh the actors you know it's just like gods of egypt oh or, oh it's just like this or it's just like it, it. the truth is if you take if you take everything out of it and you look at it as what it is a human story a human story that is truly it's tragic it's terrifying when you think of the scope and the scale of like the atrocities that the Egyptians did I mean God mercy yeah it's it's just something else entirely guys this is a great film I recommend you check it out. I mean, really, I recommend it big time. Hopefully, you all will enjoy it, and hopefully, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I, I guess that's gonna do it. Cause right now it is about I think almost five. Yeah, it's five twenty right now, guys. I'm tired. I'm wanting to go to bed. I'm gonna go upstairs, edit this as fast as I can, probably post it, uh, post it uh, sometime tomorrow, and uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that'll that'll be that. But Right now, everyone, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna end the video. So until next time, I'm Nate. I'll see you then. Peace out. <laughs>